Welcome dear students to ECS 721 data structures and algorithm and today the agenda for the lecture we'll first try to understand the memory representation of single dimensional array and then we will dive into two dimensional array in its uh, two representations one is called the row major representation and the other is called column major representation um, we'll then go through uh, examples of how to declare and initialize static and dynamic arrays and then um, we'll discuss how to implement uh, a program uh, using two-dimensional arrays to add and subtract uh, matrices. And I'll, I'm going to give you the demo as well at the end of the lecture. So let's get started. So memory representation of single-dimensional array. Uh, the address of the first element of the array, which is called the base address, as you can see in this image. And then uh, each element occupies the memory based on the data types. So for example, if this is an integer array, the first element, which is uh, the address 10,000, will occupy four bytes. And similarly, in the next consecutive address, which is 10,004, the reason is that 10,000 is the address of the first location, but it occupies four bytes. So 10,001, 10,002, 10,003, four bytes there. And then the next address is going to start from 10,004. And similarly, it has to occupy four bytes. So 10,004, five, six, and seven. And then the next consecutive address will be 10,008. And this is how uh, the single dimensional array is stored in computer memory. So this uh, fragment uh, represents the computer memory and we are storing the elements of the array and this is the base address and this is going to be the last address uh, which is usually the size minus one so this is the single uh, dimensional array representation in computer memory so in order to calculate the total memory allocated is straightforward we have to first say what is the size of each element so for example, if the array is uh, for storing integers, then each element will occupy four bytes. And then you multiply that with the number of elements in the array. So n here in this formula represents the number of elements. And this uh, four byte represents that it's going to be an integer array. So if the size is 10, you simply multiply four bytes and you get uh, 40 bytes, as you can see here. Similarly, if the number of elements are 500 and it is an integer array, each integer occupies four bytes in memory, will have um, 2000 bytes for that particular array. For a character array, as you have studied in introduction to programming, the different data types occupy different space in memory. Character data type occupies one byte. So if there are 10 elements in a character array and each occupy one byte, the total size is going to be 10 bytes. So the formula to remember is the number of elements multiplied by the size of one element. And that depends on the data type you have used for that array. Multi-dimensional array memory representation. So other than single dimensional array, which is commonly used in programs, there are certain situations where you might need two dimensional arrays. The three or onward are not very common uh, but two-dimensional are commonly used for uh, application of matrices in mathematics. So how does the computer store the two-dimensional array? There are two different methods. One is called the row measure uh, method and the other is called the column measure representation. So for example, if this is our 2D array for an integer, we have a three by three array. That means three, uh, sorry, four by three three columns and four rows. So how is this particular array represented in computer memory? Let's see a few examples and then you will understand. So let's talk about an array of uh, three by three and we are talking about the row measure representation and the uh, steps are as follows. The rows are stored one after the other and the first row will be stored first, right? So for example, you can see in the diagram, uh, the index, the first subscript represents the first row. So the first subscript represents the row and the second subscript represents the column. And for the, in, for the three by three array, that means three rows and three columns, 
the first three values don't change. So row zero again, row zero again, row zero again. So the first row will be stored first. And then the second row will be stored like the row number is has now changed from zero to one. So one, one and one, it remains because there are three columns and you can see that the values of the column are changing like one, zero, one, 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 two. So it's the second row. And then the third row will be stored. If uh, the uh, two dimensional array is stored in such a way that the first row is stored first, then the second row and then the third row in consecutive memory location, then such a representation is called a row measure representation. And this is the diagram I've created. It's uh, simple, but it's going to explain the concept. So to the left of uh, this particular image, we have a two dimensional array, which has uh, three rows and three columns, as you can see. And to the right is the computer RAM. And as you can see, the first row is stored first, and then the second row will be stored, and then the third row will be stored. And you see these gaps, but there are no gaps. It's just for the demonstration purpose to make it explicit that this is the first row, this is the second, and this is the third. But in reality, there is no space in between because array is a contiguous block of memory. There is no space or no other elements. So this is the row major representation. It's called so because the, uh, the, the array is stored in a row-wise manner, the first row and then the second and then the third and then the nth row and so on and so forth. And the second representation is column major representation. And I think you would understand this, it's obvious now, that the array is stored in such a way that the first column is stored first, then the second column, and then the third column. And you can see here that the first subscript represents the row and the second subscript represents the column. And as you can see, the row is changing, but the column is the same. Zero column, zero column, zero column, and zero row, then one, then second. So the column remains the same. So this is the first column, then this is the second column, and this is the third column. So the array in the computer RAM is stored in, in column-wise manner. Such a representation is called column major representation. And I think I have a slide on that to explain that. And as you can see, we have the same diagram. This is the two-dimensional array. We have uh, three rows and uh, three columns. And you can see the first column is stored here first in computer RAM. This is the computer RAM, by the way. And then the second column is stored next. And then the third column is stored next. So this uh, sort of representation is called column major representation. Now let's talk about how to declare and initialize a static two-dimensional array. When I say static, that means array that you declare on the stack. And we discussed the heap and the stack so much that I don't think uh, we should talk about it again. So this first line, as you can see, the data type, then the name of the array, and then we have two subscripts, right? Two square brackets. The first square bracket represents the row, number of rows, and the second square bracket represents the number of columns. So this particular array is two by two, that means two rows and two columns, and its data type is int, that means only integer value can be stored in this particular array. And the name of the array is matrix. I mean, it's like a mathematical matrix representation. And um, initialization, you can initialize the array at the time of declaration. So this part to the left of the assignment is the declaration. And to the right of the assignment, we have uh, the um, pair of curly brackets. And then within the uh, outer curly brackets, we have two more curly brackets, pair of curly brackets. The first pair represent the first row then comma, then the second pair of curly brackets represent the second row. So this is two by two, um, two dimensional array, and this is the first row. So this is row one, column number one. This is row one, column number two, just one row. This is the second row. So second row, first column, and second row, uh, second column. So that's how you declare and initialize a two dimensional array, a static two dimensional array in C++. Let's uh, take a look at the uh, dynamic arrays. 
So when I say dynamic means memory is allocated from the heap and we are using the new keyword to do so. And the declaration is uh, very interesting. As you can see, you might have uh, seen um, a pointer with one steric, right? That's common. But here we have uh, a pointer to a pointer and star star means that this particular pointer is going to store the address of another pointer. And in the, the right of the assignment says that new get memory from the heap for integers and how many an array, a single dimensional array. But I think I forgot a point. After this end, there will be a static. So it's an array of pointers. And the first um, location, uh, address of the first location will be returned. It's not an array of integers per se. There is the static, which I forgot. There is a static right next to the end. Uh, that means we are actually creating an array of pointers to an integer. So there will be array which contain two slots and both of the slot might store addresses some other integer variables. And look at the for loop. In the for loop, I have uh, declared an um, integer i variable, counter variable, initialized to zero, i less than two. I want to run this loop two times, starting from zero up to one and not uh, equal to two, but less than two, so zero, one. And at each iteration, uh, I'm then using a very interesting syntax. You see that the matrix i, that means the first location of this matrix, which is an array of pointer, I'm storing the address of a new single dimensional array. I am creating as this is not star and star, this is end. So we are actually creating a single dimensional array of two elements and we are storing the address of the first location into the first location of the pointer array. And uh, it all will make sense when I write the program. I'm going to explain that how it works. So this is how do you um, declare a two dimensional array, uh, a dynamic array. And the second line, uh, can be used to initialize. So the inner statement in the for loop is actually creating single dimensional arrays. How many? It depends on the, the, the size of the loop. If it iterates for two times, then two single dimensional arrays will be created. And if it runs for n times, n number of single dimensional arrays will be created. So here you can put these parentheses to initialize default values based on the data type. So if it is an integer, array, it's going to assign zero to every location. If it was a char, then might be a, an empty character. And for a string, it's going to be an empty string. So this is the concept of two dimensional array and how to declare and initialize the static and also the dynamic array. I will be writing two programs today, one for demonstrating the concept of static array, which is comparatively easy. And then I will jump to the second program where I will be writing a program using dynamic array. So without further ado, let's go into the demo and implement the code.